Hi, my name is Jeff Jones, director of the Big Blue Band in Mesquite, Texas. A while back, I had a completely original, somewhat borrowed idea to pick up band directors and drive them around in my wife's 2011 Honda Odyssey minivan and have a conversation. This is Maestros and Minivans. Today my guest is Dr. Kevin Sedatol. Dr. Sedatol is the director of bands at the University of Michigan. State, U Michigan State University. So I don't quantify as the swankiest pickup for a you know, clinician's gig? I mean, as it goes, no. No, okay, all right. I was, I was expecting that to be the answer, but. Not that it's not very comfortable. Oh, thank you, thank you for that. You have electronic seats. So, what instruments do your kids play? My son is a French horn player. All the good ones are. And my daughter is a flute player, but she's really more of a col uh, color guard flag player. So, I understand. Yeah. That's our, my, the two kids are complete. They, their reasons for being banned are completely different. <laughs> and that's completely fine. Yeah. So. So was being in band an option when we get into um, middle school? Or? Well, I mean, we certainly both, we pushed them towards that. Sure. I think if they said, you know, we'd rather be in choir or orchestra, that would have been fine. I wouldn't make, I'm glad they chose band, but neither one of them really even, they're like, of course we're in band. Family so, business. Yeah. Uh, you have one at UT, is that true? No, no. No, no, no I've got, okay. No. How old are yours then? Uh, I have one at Michigan State. Okay. He's a senior at Michigan State. So how does that feel with you being at Michigan? Is that a big... I'm not at right. Michigan. Yeah. So you're... Right. You want to drop me off? Is that not good enough for you? No. Yeah. I just, that, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But in fact, like maybe you should Marines. drive me off. I go for oh. the other school. This the is, one that's green and white. This is a little bit The awkward. one that pays with green money. I got it. Okay. My mistake. But y'all are still the Wolverines? You really do need to drop me off. <laughs> no, we're the Spartans. You know, the ones that won the Cotton Bowl? Oh, yeah. I yeah. heard about that. I read about that in the paper. Okay. Yeah. My mistake. And totally we're not the Wolverines, the ones that didn't go to a bowl game. So what's the best piece of advice you give your undergrads that they very rarely take? Uh, well, I don't know if they rarely take it, but I think the best piece of advice I give them is play your instrument to the highest possible ability, your highest ability level. That's not the same for everybody, but you need to play your instrument to the highest level that you can possibly play that. But you really, when you left college the first time as undergrad, you didn't have any, you didn't ever see yourself no. as a collegiate band director, or no. is that something that's kind of on the horizon? Well, I mean, but no. My dad was a was a Texas high school band director. He finished his career at Spring High School, you know, way back in the uh, in the seventies. And you know, when you're a band director's kid, you're you know, on their heels all the time. And that was just part of. I mean, that's just that's my brother's band director too. It's just what we were going to do. And so my goal was to become like the greatest five A high school band director in Texas win state marching contest, be the honor band, you know, blah, 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 blah. And things just changed. So I did uh, two years at UT, planned on, I went and started my, uh, I, I finished in a year and a half my master's. So I went and started the doctorate the next, the spring, second spring semester, uh, really thinking that I was going to start applying for high school band jobs. I, so what I really intended to do, but my, my goals were not, really towards college. Uh, associate director at Stephen F. Austin came open uh, when John Whitwell was the director of bands. Jerry told me that he thought that I should apply for this job just to, just to test, the, test the job market, you know. Well, I ended up getting an interview. Uh, they added me on. I, I put my stuff in late. They accepted it. They added me on as a finalist, so they had five finalists for that job, which is kind of unheard of, um, usually three, but they wanted to be thorough. Um, and they offered me the job kind of on the spot, so. How long were you behind the pine curtain? Five years, and those were five really super important years uh, for me because I made a lot of mistakes, and those People were very generous and kind to me, and uh, they allowed it, and they understood, and 
Um, so John was only there two years. Then I was interim director of bands for a year. And then Fred Allen came as director of bands. And I was there two years with Fred. Um, the same, and that interim year is where I met Rob Carnahan. He came um, as my associate and we had a really terrific year. Uh, that was the year that Maslenka uh, Symphony Number no. 4 was premiered and Stephen F. Austin uh, was one of the commissioning, uh, was part of the consortium, was a consortium of four universities. University of Texas premiered it at TMEA that year and Rob and I were sitting in the balcony and after the performance, which was stunning and people are you know, throwing babies at the end and I looked at Rob and I was like, there's no way we're gonna be able to do this. <laughs> and he said, yeah, we can. He said, yes, we can. I, I still vividly remember this. He goes, we'll sectionalize and we'll do, we'll do it. We'll do it together. And, and, and those kids played their tails off. Um, it's the internet, you can say tails on the internet. Yeah, yeah, I had to think about that for a second. That, uh, but it was really, I mean, it was, that, that was a really cool year with Rob. I got lucky enough to be hired at the University of Michigan uh, as, as uh, Bob Reynolds' assistant, which is still, even now, is hard for me to say and to contemplate that. Um, because for me, besides my teachers, which would include Dick Floyd, Mike Hathcock, and Jerry Junkin, Bob is, he's, he's at the very top, you know, and so he's, um, he's kind of a, been a mentor to all of us. So, so I, I just, I'll never forget the first time I was sitting in auditions with him in his office, and I was, it was surreal. I'm hearing all these incredible players come in, and it's me and Bob sitting there doing <laughs> auditions together. So it was great. I was the uh, director of the marching band, um, and then conductor of the concert band, and I also took, taught music ed courses there. Um, and it was, uh, I felt like I was, I tried to treat it like I was a student still, because I'd never miss Bob's rehearsals. And I was always there with the score, and it was invaluable to me. Uh, you, when you take college jobs, you just have to be open to go where the job is. I tell students that all the time, it's like you cannot, you can't target a place, I have to be in this state. Like, you have to be where the job is. and. It just happens to be that my two jobs, or all my jobs, have been in two states. So, you know, you talk about circumstances and you know the right job coming up. Were you looking for the right opportunity to come up, or you just had your eyes on the landscape? Or I mean, how did you know it was well, time? I think we all, you know, we all kind of have. If I'd love to get this job, if it ever came open, right? But you don't ever sit there and kind of like focus on that. You do really good work in the job that you're in and because you'll you'll never get that next job if that doesn't happen what's the biggest mistake you think you made as a young teacher oh probably not listening to the people that i should be listening to until you know you get slapped uh, on the hand enough to like you just let let your guard down and let be a sponge and let it all kind of, let everything kind of enhance your teaching. And once I did that, then everything started working better. I completely agree that there's so much that I thought I knew. But I think the other thing for me was, in my first job, I was just so worried that those guys would know that I didn't know anything. But the funny thing now, looking back on it, is I, mean, I find that more helpful when they'll just admit we don't know and want to you know, continue to learn. I just assume. Being a dumb kid, you go to college, you got a degree. Yeah. People liked you when you got your degree. Of right. course, you know enough to right. be on the level with these right. guys. And, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. It's very natural. Right. Um, what what we should tell every graduating music ed major is: look, they all know that you know nothing, so don't pretend. Just go be a sponge and and be a good person and be someone that has initiative and will you know, and responsible and dedicated and, and try to get with a good mentor. That's what I tell all of our students at Michigan State. And unfortunately in Michigan, you can easily go out and be the only person at a program your first job out. Uh, because they just, you know, Michigan doesn't line up all of the, you know, 16 assistants for one high school. 
of like the great state of Texas. Yeah. As an undergrad, do you push the kids that you mentor to do the, the music ed thing first because more than likely they're not going to get a performance job coming right out of school? Or Listen, do you... I, I am not a believer in performance degrees, so I think it's ridiculous. Especially I think for an undergrad, I in my think it's, I, exactly. Now, masters and doctorate, that's your own choice. And but I don't even know. I don't even know why we even give them out because just because you're a music ed major doesn't mean you have to be any lesser player. I mean, you should, as a music ed major, you should try to. You should want to be the best player you can possibly be because you're training your, you know, hopefully your individual musicianship is going to transfer to what you do on the podium. Um, so I yeah I don't understand the whole uh, performance degree thing. What was your first car? Uh, first car I owned. Uh, first car you got to drive. Oh, uh, Toyota Celica, uh, two door. Okay. And the first day I drove, I hit a dog. <laughs> and it was my dad's car. And it was cool, it had all these Hitting the dog was cool? Hit, no, hitting no. The, it had all these fins and spoilers all over the car. Nice. And all of a sudden, I'm going, I'm, I'm headed home, back to my house. It was in the afternoon, and this huge Doberman Pinscher jumps out. And I, I, he just, like, right in front, I couldn't do anything. Well, this was Toyota Celicas are not big cars. I look, I pull over, I look back, the dog jumps up. And runs off, and here I am with a car that's mangled, and I got to go face my dad after on day one of driving. The best car I drove in high school was not even car; it was a Chevy pickup sidestep yeah. that had wagon wheels on it and um, had bucket seats that were not even attached to the car. <laughs> so every time, and it had this little tiny like steering wheel on it and it had the you know what are the what are the mufflers called that the glass like, packs yeah, yeah 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 now i bought this car i mean i i my dad said if you want a car you're gonna have to i'll pay for half of it you're gonna have to pay for the rest of it well so we bought this car this this truck for like i don't know fourteen hundred dollars something <laughs> like that couldn't come in real late and pass curfew in that truck though because <laughs> Park down the street. there's no way i just turned the engine off kind of coast in so <laughs> not that i ever did that no no of course yeah. The other yeah, great things from, for young teachers now is that there's so much right at their fingertips that was not, at least when I was going through, it just wasn't, that's not the case. So there's, I mean, just the internet alone is, I mean, you've got, you want to know the, you don't know the alternate fingering for, you know, right. note Z on the Sopranino, You'll, you can find it, you know, it's, it's. Not that you would ever want to know that, but it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think it's left pinky. Where are we going? It's my school. Okay. okay. All right. It's yeah. like, shouldn't I be going this Eventually, way? Eventually, okay. yes. <laughs> but yeah, we do have music. I mean, Number one starts over here, and we go up through 1900 in the other room, but all the way back to 1969. So with charms, you know, and you're talking earlier about everybody being on the Internet and everything available to you right. on the Internet, that we get <clears throat> at least once a week. I got an email today. So we're like, hey, we're doing this piece. I can't find this part. And it's right. so great that you can scan it and just no, it's terrific. email that, it to all of that. Um, what do you miss about the old days? You talk about how great it is to have everything right here at the fingertips, but what do you miss about when it all got started or when you were first getting into the business? What I miss about Texas <clears throat> quite frankly, is the, and this is a little different now too, but the camaraderie amongst directors, I mean, competitive and for sure and all of that, but the willingness to help each other and to, you know, no one is, tr I won't say no one's trying to outdo each other. That's not the case, <laughs> but this is Texas. But but that's, I think that's always been part of, of this state and the way teaching, um, the teaching of students, everybody's interested. And I recently, uh, in Midwest this past year, I was, uh, I was a liaison for um, Midlothian, and uh, I was also involved in the Vista Ridge rehearsals. And I watched 
the directors with these bands, you know, work with their kids, but they also have these kind of like big time mentor directors from Texas that are not even part of their program that they have worked with them throughout the year and they wanted to be there as part of the process. One of the things that was so surprising to me was how approachable, you know, the heroes of the profession are if you'll just approach them. Most of the time they're really excited and I think that's where when you get to pieces like Lincolnshire or, or you know some of those landmark works you know you really want that help and that support but right. it's for so long you know we hesitated and someone finally said you need to call Mr. Floyd and ask him to come and work your group and it's been a wonderful well, experience and, since uh, but you just you assume those people oh well my mm. band's not ready for you know and people that you can identify that have serious ties to music education like Dick Floyd, like Jerry Junkin, those they're completely approachable and want to help, you know, and they're happy to, you know, particularly if you're doing literature like that, where like, of course I'm gonna be there if they can. Dick has always been that way. I mean it just it's just well, he wouldn't have been in the positions that he's been in if that wasn't, you know, an, a priority in his career. Um, because it was it, that's how he started. When he started in Richardson as a young teacher, there were there were mentor teachers there, you know, and uh, Joe Frank was there. The Joe Frank Senior right. was there. I mean, we're talking way back, um, and those were you know those people were mentors. So you know, here's Dick Floyd, Bob Blanton, Eddie Green, Howard Dunn, um, all there, and 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 Bobby Floyd right you know behind Dick. They're all there together, you know, and what happened to all of those people, you know, they're, they became leaders in our field. Um, this goes back to what I was talking about, you know, the Texas high school band directors helping each other. Yeah. They were all incredibly competitive with each other. I mean, really, but they all really respected each other and asked for help. So I just never, now I, I encourage my students, like, look, if you have an opportunity to go talk to someone or interact, don't be shy about it. Do not be shy. You'll find in most cases these people are very friendly. And Yo-Yo Ma was on our campus last last year, and I decided I'm going to go up and talk to him and and you know just interact with him. He's this incredibly nice person and was very willing to talk and to you know and was interested in not just what he was doing but what you were doing. Right. And so. Well, I think you we forget that they love what we love. Of course. You know, and so a yeah. lot of times there's a connection there. And then, you know, by the time you get Mr. Floyd and Professor Junkin to ride around your minivan, I mean, then you can get just about anybody. Like, if you start dropping time, those names me. in an there email, I mean, if you get, <laughs> it, it's impressive you read that far down the email. I, I, really, well, I, I appreciate I, that I a lot. I was just like, and then I saw, I was ready to hit delete, and then, oh, man, yeah. so. And that's how close sometimes in life yeah, that's right. things, yeah. Just, just keep reading. You've got it. you can't stop. <laughs> Don't give up. Was there ever a point where you're like, this is it, I'm going to sell used cars? Yeah. What's the After my first year of teaching, I was convinced this is not for me. Um, I even I uh, started taking some business classes at a local junior college and some math courses because I was getting ready. I wanted to take the entrance exam to get into business school for because I thought you know that's what I need to be doing. So I took these courses, took the GMAT, got the score from the GMAT. <laughs> And knew that I was going to be a band director the rest of my life. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and what that was was it was the it was me realizing you know what you don't know as much as you think you do, and realizing you need to open up and listen to people, and um, because they want to help you, but if you don't listen, you're going to go down the road of of being unsuccessful, and it's going to this is this is what's going to happen to you. And I did not like that feeling. And so that's what I did. The whole point here was to do something fun, but also to really be encouragement to people who are in this place, who are in the trenches every single day dealing with, you know, music education. And it's not the highest paying job, but I always say most days it beats working. Right. How many things can you go to where it's, it's really kind of a joy to do your job? Yes, it's hard work, but you get to work with young people. You get to influence lives. And you get to do it through music, and I mean, I, for me, as I realized after my first year of teaching, that that was the most important thing. 
Well, I appreciate you making time to come yeah, and do this. Sure. I really fun. do. I'm glad that I had enough important names in there right. that you did not. <laughs> and I, I don't know if I put them in bold print or not. I, I was considering that. I didn't know if that seemed presumptuous or just like, make sure you see these names as you're aiming I for the delete key. I nearly called them before I agreed. And I, like, no. I, I would have expected nothing less. Yeah.